Let's kick off Transformers with this question. FM17, P42Q9. Wow, it's a good summary. Lots of calculation. An ideal Transformer is shown. Ideal Transformer means what? No energy loss. Hmm. So you got the input, primary coil. Ooh, this one is N turns. So this is the turns, number of turns for primary. They already told us. Secondary coil, they didn't really tell us. Explain why the core is made of iron. Why not something else? Why iron? Why do you even have an iron core? Why not plastic rubber? Well, the main purpose of an iron core is to increase the flux linkage. Increase the magnetic flux linkage. La. So let's just write there. The magnetic flux linkage between who? Linkage between the first coil. Um, it's not going to say, la, but between primary and secondary coil. Okay, if the iron core wasn't there, that's air cores, your flux may not all go over to the secondary core. And it's not as strong. So increased flux linkage is what's the what the purpose of the iron core is. It also becomes magnetized. That's why you can do that. Now, explain why an EMF is not induced at the output when you have a constant direct voltage at the input. That means, oh, why is there no EMF and the secondary when I have a DC? So if this is DC, then you just generate a magnetic field that is constant. Means your flux is constant. So no change in flux if you have a constant DC current and if nothing is changing, it's just that. So what's going to happen in a secondary coil? Nothing. No induced current, nothing. Flip the table, throw it away. Useless. So that's what we're going to explain. In proper terms, for exam, this is what we want to say. So, we can say that DC, direct current, has a constant current. Current only flows in one direction. That's what we mean. So, your flux in the primary coil is not changing, no? In primary coil and secondary coil is constant. They are both linked, remember? So, both are constant. No change. Great. Fantastic. Next. So how does that relate to EMF? Gotta remember Faraday's law. How does Faraday's law work? Um, Faraday's law is E proportional to D phi dt. No change in flux, no EMF induced at the output. So we're going to say that. So uh, EMF can only be induced if there is a change in flux. Yeah, there's many ways to say this. Lah. If there is a change in flux. There we go. So one mark for each. B1, B1. Okay, these are kind of the facts or like the concepts you need to know. Lah. Hopefully by now they are more internalized after going through chapter 23. Now they give us a graph. An alternating voltage or peak value, 150 volt, is applied in the primary coil. So this is our voltage at the primary. Turns of the primary, and then they show us the secondary coil down here in this diagram. So this is the secondary coil's EMF. Shown here. Ooh, I smell a calculation coming. <laughs> smell it from a mile away. Use the data from figure 9.2, there we go, to calculate the number of turns of the secondary coil. So they're asking us to find N of secondary. Now you got to remember, we have the same flux leaking both coils, so we can do a ratio. This equation, hopefully you'll memor uh, memorize it at least, or kind of know how to use it. The voltage ratio, secondary over primary, is equal to the ratio of the number of turns in the secondary over number of turns in the primary. So if you want to find NS, the number of turns in the secondary, you must do this. Voltage of secondary over primary times NP. Okay, so rearranging your ratio. So how do we find the number of turns? Let's do this. What is the voltage of secondary coil? We have to read from graph. But miss, what voltage to use? RMS? Peak? Which one to use? I doesn't matter. La. Use peak. La. Okay. So we're going to use the peak voltage over here. Since they already give us the peak. Okay, so secondary coil, what's the v, v of that? 
This one looks like 50... I can't see properly. Le. 52. Ah. I think it looks like 52. So the voltage of the secondary is 52. That's the peak. Lah. RMS is just a divide by square root 2, so it will cancel out anyway. So no need. Lah. So VS is 52. Why else? Let's write it down first. VP, is it given to us? Yep. VP is 150 volts right up here. So we just write there 150. Times the number of turns of the primary, which is given to us as... 1,200. Ah. Wow, many, many turns. Now, if you press the calculator correctly, you should get about 416 turns. Very precise. And this is the number of turns in the secondary core in order to have that step up or step down. Uh, step down, I think. Uh, in order to have that step down effect. So, state one time when the magnetic flux linking the secondary core is maximum. Flux, ah. Flux is maximum. But then this graph they give to us is EMF or how to find flux ah? Huh? Okay. Remember I ah, remember ah? Flux is maximum. When the what, what is the D phi dt when your flux is maximum? This D phi dt should be zero. At when you are at the maximum flux. Why? Nah, draw for you. Flux graph is something like this. When flux is maximum, right on top, what is the gradient? What is the slope? What is the tangent to the curve? Zero. And you need to remember that d phi dt is the induced EMF. Zero. In the secondary coil. So you look for the graph law. Where is it zero? Oh, got there, this part. Here, zero, here, zero, here, zero. Any of these answers you can use. So, I'm going to choose... I like this one. I'm going to choose 7.5. There are many answers. Lah. Anywhere where the EMF is zero, because the flux is maximum, that's the answer you can choose. So, let's go and write it down. Where is the magnetic flux maximum? 7.5. Other possible answers can include 0, 7.5, okay, 0, 0.0, Anywhere where it's zero EMF, also can. A1 mark for this. Next, more calculation. Mm, oh, I forgot to mark the one on top. Final answer is one mark. Equation mark is this ratio thing. Do you know how to do the ratio? Ah, if you forgot already, go check out the theory video again. How do you get this ratio? Alright, moving on. Resistor is connected between the output terminal of secondary core. Mean power is dissipated. 1.2 watt. So, mm, let's write this down first. P average, mean, uh, is 1.2 watt. You can assume the voltage across the resistor is equal. Calculate the resistance of the resistor. If you haven't tried this, go try it out and see how to brain this first, if you haven't. So now you have a resistor in the output terminal. How does that look like? Ne? Output terminal, right? Now I connect a resistor. So this resistor will have a certain power. Power means what? Power means energy change. No? So you're converting electrical energy to heat energy. So that's what we call power. So you have a certain resistance that we're trying to find inside here. So of course you have an alternating current uh, inside here. Back and forth, back and forth if you have AC. But how do you find this uh, power? Do we have any clues? Uh? How do you find Okay. Oh, but they give us power. Right, right, right. I forgot. Liao, I forgot. Liao. So this one, the power is 1.2 watts coming out, being radiated as heat in the resistor. Power output. Average lah, mean power output. How do you find the resistance? Do we know the RMS? Because we know P equals to IV. We know our P. Uh... We want to find R or you cannot. Lor. So P equals to I squared. Uh, how about that? I think this one can. We know power. We want to find resistance. If we can know current. Maybe the current flowing through here. I RMS. Ah, if we know I RMS, we can find R. So let's see. How do we calculate? So we know power is that. Do we know I RMS from the info that they give to us? Actually, we don't know. Leh. I cannot use I. Ah. So which equation do we use? Oh, right. V. 
Hey, we know the V. So why are we using I? Ah, yeah, let's use I. Let's use V and R. So your once upon a time, you learn P equals to V squared over R. That's for DC. If you've got AC, what do you do? You can think in terms of RMS. So P average can be equal to V RMS squared over R. Or you could think of the power in terms of V naught, the peak. So there's another equation, I forgot where it came from, uh, which you can use to calculate where it is 1 over 2 V naught square over R. I have the one I can, I can delete. La. Delete. Okay. In case you forgot where it comes from, V RMS is V naught over root 2. That's the, the equation that we'll use a lot to calculate V RMS from peak voltage. So we can find peak voltage from the graph. We see now what's the amplitude, the biggest value. So you see here, biggest value is what? Oh, we already found 52 up here. Okay, so we know 52. So let's calculate. No more space down there. Let me just write it up here again. So the average mean power they give to us is 1.2 watts. That will be equal to the peak, which is 52 square over 2R. So I got my value of 1126. For R, so the resistance will be 1126, wow, 0.6666, 0.7. La. Final answer, I can round it off to 2SF if I want to. Sure, 1100 also can. 1130 also can. So two marks, one for final answer, one for plugging in your equation that you know this, any of this equation. I just choose peak because it's easier. You say, miss, R don't have RMS, ah. R is a constant, my friend. This is a resistor. Where's the resistor? Ah, resistor. R is constant. There's no RMS or peak R. No, 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 no. That is for current and voltage. But if you go to other components, their R may not be constant, but this is a resistor, so R is constant. Last one. On the figure, haha, <laughs> sketch the variation with time of power P dissipated in the resistor for a certain time. Oh my goodness. So we have to sketch the power dissipated in the resistor in a graph based on what they gave to us here. How do we do that? We first gotta actually I'm gonna I'm gonna try sketch the power graph on this side first. Because I can see both. So power. How is power related to V? We just did a calculation just now. We know that power is going to be well if you want to use V and R. V squared over R. This is the actual power, not mean power, average power, the actual, actual power. V squared over R. So how do you plot that over here? Well, you just square your V. But first, we're going to look at key points. Key events, I'm going to put them as dotted lines on this thing. So that's our key events, the points where the, there is no, no EMF at all. No voltage. So the first thing you want to do is know that this thing is squared. Although you have negative values and you have positive values, it doesn't matter because you'll be squared at the end of the day. Ah, so good to know. So there's no negative value. I'm going to remind myself, no negative power, no such thing because it's squared. Okay. So I know the graph is going to be zero at these points because no voltage, no power. La. Now how would I draw the shape? Something like this. It's a square graph, so something like that. Oh. Eh, try to draw it symmetrical a bit. But do I need to know the peak? Maybe it's a good idea. How many marks is this? Three marks. Oh, okay, definitely got to know the peak. So we got to do some extra calculation. Why is the maximum power? So maximum power occurs when your voltage is maximum. This is not an equation, la. this is just, you can calculate that. So maximum voltage will be 52 square over R. R, we just found, right? 1127. So this will give a value of about 2.4. 2.4, right? Yeah, I calculated 2.4 Watt. So maximum occurs when you have maximum voltage you have maximum 2.4 watt up here. Okay. Mm, and this is pr pretty much the diagram you can draw. So let me transfer it over to the other side. So here's my guiding lines. I make sure that 
all the times when the EMF is zero is when P is zero. So these are all the gray dotted lines. And I make sure my peak is 2.4 Watt. And then I draw my sinusoidal curve. <laughs> Something like this. Okay. Uh, three marks, where do they come from? Well, the first one come that you know where the zeros are. The trolls are at zero. Zero, oh, not zero, oh. Wow, very dangerous, eh? I should draw until it touches zero at the exact that point. You know, you try to draw better than me, lah, okay? So these are zeros, P0 zero at those specific times when E is zero. Okay, that's B1 for the troughs at zero. Then you must have at least three kind of cycles. So one cycle, two cycle, three cycle. Okay, got, then done. So these are for the cycles of power. Then lastly, you must have this 2.4 watt. This is the final mark for the amplitude or how high the maximum power is. Okay, so no matter which direction your current flow, what's the EMF, your resistor will always be throwing out power because square dim, don't care about positive. Negative. There's no negative power. It's just power, 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 all coming out. All right, so that is... This question, a pretty good overview of all the transformer ideas. Hopefully that was helpful in helping you to better understand how to calculate uh, transformer things when there's numbers, how to explain certain things. Go try out a few more passive questions and also check out the videos that we're going to post right after this one. So that is all for this video. I will see you in the next question.